Hello everyone, welcome to Book of Star. So I wanted to share with you an experience that I had with God. Last year, I was under intense spiritual warfare. Um, it was actually so bad that I found myself crying a lot of days. But this year, because I heard um, a lot of prophecies that this is the year of double portion, this is the year of God's favor, I decided I'm not gonna have the same year that I had in 2019. Instead, when I get frustrated, I'm gonna come home and worship God. So um, starting January 2nd, really at the top of this year, I was going to work and every day I was getting so frustrated, but I was like, nope, I'm not gonna let the enemy get to me. I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna worship. And so that's what I did. I would worship every single day, then I would start feeling better. God would tell me it's not what it seems. Like whatever I'm seeing, that's not what's actually happening. But every day, the um, I still kept feeling frustrated. So, um, one day, this was January 5th, I went to my therapy session and um, we were talking and she told me that she couldn't bill my insurance until she found um, something that was wrong with me because that's just what happens in order for her to bill the insurance. So I said to her, well, if we keep talking, I'm pretty sure we'll find something. Um, and lo and behold, the more that we spoke, um, something did come up for me when she broached the topic of fear. I felt the blood drain from my face as I thought about leaving my job. And I thought to myself, you know what, God's not even calling me to leave my job, so let me just push that thought out of my mind. But that thought bothered me for a while because honestly, I was scared to leave my job. Really, I really was. Um, so anyway, I, I head to Bible study and I'm like, you know what, let me just push the thought out of my mind. And I get to Bible study and um, one of my friends, he gives his testimony and he talks about how God led him to quit his job. And when he quit his job, God opened a world of opportunities to him. And I thought to myself, no way, God, like this is not a coincidence, but I just don't believe that you're telling me to quit my job. So I'm like, okay, forget about it. Um, Wednesday, I go to work and I am so frustrated. I mean, at this point, this is Wednesday, January 6th. At this point, I felt like going home to worship didn't even matter anymore because I've worshiped so many days and I just felt um, so frustrated still. And this day I decided I'm gonna go home and have a pity party. Um, but a song uh, kept playing over and over in my head all day at work. Um, and I didn't know, I wasn't paying attention to the lyrics and I didn't really uh, pick up on what song it was. Um, and I don't know if you're like me, but whenever there's a song in my head, I have to get it out of my head by listening to it. So all day I'm frustrated, all day this song is in my head, but I had decided to go home to have a pity party. And when I left work, I put the song on so I can just finally get it out of my head. And it was a Sunday service song. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are Sunday service fans, but I am. And this song's called Every Hour and it goes, Sing till the power of the Lord comes down. And I started laughing and I thought, ooh, Holy Spirit came through with the assist. Because what he was telling me was, instead of going home and having a pity party, go home and worship until the power of the Lord comes down. And so that's exactly what I did. I went home, I put a sign on my door that said, um, do not disturb unless you're coming in to worship with me. And I blasted my music. I sang at the top of my lungs. I danced so hard. I said, Holy Spirit, you told me to come home and worship until the power of the Lord comes down. I need you right now. Come into my space, come into my space. And the way that, um, the way that God speaks to me is um, through visions. This is one of the ways that he speaks to me. Um, and so I remember him giving me a vision of me turning off my lights and getting on my knees and singing. And so I did that. And the song that I did it to was, Oh, come to the altar. And I love that song. That song always brings me to tears. So I'm on my knees, I'm bawling, I'm crying. I'm like, Lord, I need you. I can't do this on my own. Like I surrender to you, uh, whatever you want me to do. Like, God, please come and help me. And then he gave me a vision of me turning back on the light and standing up. And so I did that. And by this time, Travis Green, Be Still came on. And I'm just standing there and I'm singing and I'm worshiping. And then I felt a push. Um, something pushed me into my furniture and I fell backwards. And I gathered myself and then I, and then, um, I felt my leg, my left leg go extremely weak. And I thought to myself, okay, I guess I'm supposed to fall now. And I fall to the ground. And then um, I feel 
cold air just cover my body, it consumed my entire body. Now, um, there was a draft that day and my kitchen window was open, but the way that my apartment is set up, my kitchen's in the front and my bedroom is all the way to the back. There's no way that it would have been that much cold air and I just felt this cold air consuming my body, completely covering me. And I remember I heard God say in the still small voice, quit your job. And I thought, I'm not quitting my job, like that's crazy. And God was like, quit your job. And I'm like, no, I'm not quitting my job because I got bills to pay. I'm going to Jamaica this year. It's my grandmother's 80th birthday. Like you said, this was the year double portion. And then God said, why is it so hard? And I bawled my eyes out because the truth is I was scared. I couldn't quit my job. Like I felt like my job was my provider. I felt like that's where I get um, everything I need. And as a Christian, you know, we often say that God is our provider, but I didn't feel that way. And what happened was um, 10 years ago, I was unemployed for like two, three years, and that trauma was still there for me. So I was extremely afraid of losing my job and quitting my job. Um, but as I lay there, I can hear in the background, Travis Green, be still and know that I am God. And I was just like, okay, okay. And I sat there for what felt like 30 minutes and I could hear God say, quit your job, then reach out to a person at your church, um, she'll give you next steps, and then go into your 21 day fast. Um, and the person at my church that God told me to reach out to, she's actually gone through this several times. Like God has told her to quit her job several times and just walk by faith. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. But Lord, I'm gonna need your help because I know that fear is gonna take over tomorrow and I'm gonna need you to be with me every step of the way. So I got up. And I went to my kitchen, I started washing dishes, and I could hear God say to me, you have no idea what I have in store for you. And the truth is, I didn't. But what I knew was what the task ahead was extremely difficult and scary. And so the next morning, I woke up, and of course, fear consumed me. And I said, okay, God, yesterday might have been a dream, but if you are really calling me to um, quit my job, I need peace that surpasses all understanding in this moment and I need you to be with me every step of the way, encouraging me. And in that moment, I felt peace come over my body. And as I was, as I was getting ready for work, um, I was listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes and the message that day happened to be keep it moving. And I thought, of course, um, it was about the Israelites when they were leaving Egypt, how the water was before them and they can hear in the background, the Egyptians chasing after them. And Bishop T.D. Jakes was like, but don't stop moving. Keep on going. It may look like there's no way out, but God got you. Keep on going. Don't let fear stop you. Keep on going. And I'm like, okay, God, I see what you're saying. And I believe it was at the end of that message that um, Bishop T.D. Jakes was praying. And he was saying, um, rise, Lazarus, rise. Jesus is calling you out. Come alive, Lazarus. I don't know who this message is for. This message may be for someone on the internet, but come alive, Lazarus rise Lazarus and I felt like he was talking directly to me like Jesus was calling me out he was telling me it's time to rise it's time to come alive and what he was drawing out of me was my creativity and so I leave uh, my I leave my house and I'm heading to work and I see signs on um, not billboards I see signs on trucks I see signs everywhere there's a sign that's like you deserve better get ready to win you're already winning. And I'm like, okay, God, I see you got me. Um, so I get to my office and I talk to my supervisor and I tell him, today's my last day. And he's like, what? I've never had anyone quit on me before. And I'm like, well, I guess we have a bunch of firsts. And he's like, well, um, can you at least work the, fir the, work the full day and um, don't do anything because I just wanna try to figure out what to do next. And so I said, okay, but the thing is, I didn't come prepared to work the full day. I didn't eat breakfast, I didn't pack lunch. All I had was a bunch of bags to pack up all my stuff. Um, so I go to, back to my desk and I'm drafting an email to my VP to let her know that I'm leaving. I'm drafting an email to HR. And uh, while I'm drafting an email, I get an email from my VP who's like, wait a second, you're leaving, hold on. I'm getting on a plane at 1.45, give me a chance so I could call you. And I'm like, okay. Um, but I'm trying to like let her know it's not that serious you know today's just my last day and she's like well you're making me think something's wrong because you're not giving me your two weeks 
And the reality is I didn't want to give my two weeks because I didn't want to be convinced to stay um, over the two weeks. So 145 comes and she calls me and she told me, you know what? I've been here before. I've quit twice for my job. Take the weekend, think about it, and let me know what you think on Monday. And I was so shocked. Now, this was a Thursday. And I was so shocked because I'm like, um, okay, God tells me to quit my job, but he shows me grace in that moment. So I was grateful. So I did reach out to um, the member from my church that God told me to reach out to. And I told her what the situation was. And she said to me, well, if God told you to do that, stand firm on his promises. So I'm like, okay. I'm thinking she's about to give me next steps like, okay, once you quit your job, you go voluntarily do this. She said to me, I'm going to pray for you. Um, and then she gave me, she gave me an answer to a question that I had in my spirit for a very long time. A question that I never asked anyone, a question that I never even uttered to God. For a long time, I wondered if I can take communion at home without a pastor, without being in church. And in that moment, I didn't even have to ask her. She said to me, well, if you're going to go into your 21 day fast, don't forget to take communion. A lot of people forget to take communion. And I laughed because I'm like, oh my goodness, that's the key that God was telling uh, was uh, was telling me that she was going to give me. It had nothing to do with work, but everything to do with the fact that God was like, I hear you. I hear the questions that you have. By Friday, oh no, so Thursday night, um, after I gave, after I told them I was leaving, I go home and I meditate because I'm like, what just happened? God showed me grace. Um, and so in my meditation, God showed me a vision of Abraham. Um, when he's about to, uh, when he's about to sacrifice Isaac and I can see the Holy Spirit stopping his hand. And I thought, clearly that's what God was doing with me. Like this was just a test of faith. Um, because the night before when I was on the floor crying and God was like, quit your job. He had told me, remember Abraham. And that's not the first time he's told me that. Usually when he tells me that I always think, um, remember Abraham, uh, God didn't actually have him move forward with the act. Instead, he stopped him. He just was testing him. Um, but what I came to find out is that God was saying that to me because he was impressed with Abraham's faith. And he was asking me to do the same thing, to move in bold faith. So um, by Friday, I'm able to get all my frustrations out and, and I feel fine. And I'm thinking, you know what? God was testing me. I don't need to quit my job. Saturday, I felt the same way. I had every intention of going into my office and telling my VP, you know what, I'm gonna stay. This was just a test from God. And then Sunday comes and I'm in the middle of worship at church and I hear God say, quit your job. Give your two weeks, quit your job. And I thought, what? God, I thought you were just testing me. But I trust you, God. If you're telling me to do this, I trust you. So. After um, church, I go to Serengeti Tea to meet a girlfriend and she's about an hour late. So I'm in the middle of reading my book when um, a guy approaches me. Turns out it's my friend from Bible study, the same one who shared his story about leaving his job because God told him. And I started laughing because I knew in that moment that God was just confirming it's time to leave your job. So, mm, lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> so, um, Monday, I go into the office and I tell my VP, you know what, I'm giving my two weeks officially. And she asked me why and I told her, you know, I'm a Christian and I believe God and I'm, I truly believe that I'm being led to leave my job right now. And she's like, you know what, I trust you. I trust that you have great instincts, um, great intuition, and this is something that you need to do. But why else are you leaving? And so I explained to her, um, my supervisor is someone who I felt like doesn't challenge me. I felt like um, he's not really there for me. I felt like I'm not really being led and molded the way that I want to be in order to move up in my career. And for the last four years being at this company, I just feel underpaid. I feel like I've been promoted. I work very hard and I'm a manager now and still like it's not being reflected in my compensation. So she asked me, um, what number are you looking for? And I threw out a crazy number because I thought, you know, they're not gonna reach it anyway. So when I gave her the number, she was like, yeah, they're definitely not gonna pay you that much in this role. And I was like, exactly. So for the two weeks now, um, as I'm gearing up to leave my job, God does the amazing thing. So, to, uh, so before, uh, when I was coming home frustrated, I felt frustrated and God kept telling me, 
um, it's not what it seems because I felt like I was being overlooked. I was the only one underpaid. I felt like people didn't value me. But for the two weeks when I was gearing up to leave my job, Oh my goodness, God showed me how much my team loves me. He showed me how much my creative vision has evolved our channel that I was managing, how we made $1.2 million in just one month, increased our subscribers, like, like everything. Most of our victories was because of my channel that I was managing and my creative direction and vision and just how, um, just how I chose to do it. And it was just amazing. Like my team showed me how much I was valued there and how much I loved them and how much I didn't really want to leave, but I just knew that there was something more that God was showing me. So um, Friday comes, it's a Friday before, it's my last day, because my last day was a Monday. So Friday's my official last working day. My VP emails me and she's like, um, give me a call when you have a chance. So I give her a call and I'm thinking she's telling me to call her so that I can like do something else before I leave. And she says to me, I'm coming to you with a counter offer. And I'm like, what? She's like, yes, I'm offering you an increase of $13,500 plus a 10% bonus. With this package, you will be over your asking price. I was like, what? I almost cried, I almost cried. I never had anyone fight for me like that, maybe only one time before. But other than that, no one ever go to bat for me like that before. She said, I want you to take the weekend and think about it. And I'm just in her office like, I didn't expect that. She told me how valuable I am, how they did not want me to leave. They wanted me to stay. They wanted me to grow with them. And I just felt so appreciated. And I felt so excited because, you know, one thing that I really wanted in my um, finances was peace and breakthrough. And the number she offered me was breakthrough. Um, so now I'm taking the weekend, I'm thinking about it. And I can't stop singing the number in my head like, oh my goodness, I get this increase, I get this increase. and. Part of me still felt like, but God, I feel like you have more for me. I feel like this is more than just me getting this increase. And I felt tortured for that weekend. That entire weekend, I just felt tortured. I'm like, God, I need an answer. I gotta answer her on Monday. Friday goes by, Saturday goes by. I don't hear anything from God. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And so Sunday comes and my friend's like, you know what, God's gonna give you clarity. And he did. Um, while I was meditating and seeking him, God said, go to Hebrews 12. And in Hebrews 12, it reads this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance. The race is set before us. The race that is set before us. Looking onto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And the truth is, as soon as I got to the word witnesses, God downloaded so many visions in my mind. He started to show me why I was frustrated, why I felt oppressed. It's because of the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear runs so deeply in my family and we excuse it by saying things like, oh, I'm just comfy. Oh, God's not leading me that way. Oh, that's a stupid, um, that's a stupid decision to make. Um, I'm just a homebody. And he, he showed me like how much me and my family, we won't do things because of the spirit of fear. And it is so oppressing. I felt so weighed down and, um, God was showing me that the witnesses that he speaks of, speaks of is my family. Like I can choose to take the 13,500 increase or I can choose to break the spirit of fear on my family and in my life. And I said, God, I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, and not only that, that same day, um, Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi and along with others had passed away. And I thought to myself, you know what? I can't allow fear to run my life anymore. I need to take risks. I need to do what it is that God is calling me to do. I need to move in bold faith. And I thought um, God has showed me that only one will do it. Who will do it? And I, I raised my hand. I'm gonna do it. But I said, God, I need you to be with me every step of the way. I can't do this on my own. As I'm going into my job to turn down that much money, I need you to be with me. I need strength and I need confidence. And so uh, Monday morning comes and I wake up and of course fear comes over me because I'm like, how can I turn down this sure thing 
for an unsure thing. Like I have no idea where God is taking me. He hasn't revealed the next steps. He hasn't even told me um, what the next steps look like. And so there was a lot of fear there. But I said, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you. And so I got on the train and I'm doing my devotion. And at that time I was doing a devotion um, called Jesus's Miracles. And it just so happened that that day, the miracle that he was uh, performing was calling Lazarus to rise from his grave. And it was so interesting because I knew God was talking to me again because two weeks ago when I first started this journey, God, uh, God used Bishop T.D. Jakes to say that in his prayer. And he said, um, rise, Lazarus, rise, it's your time. And now two weeks later, as I'm making this big decision, God's like, rise, Lazarus, rise. And so I was so blessed by that and I knew what I needed to do. On top of that, while I was on the train, um, someone from HR hit me up and was like, hey, did you talk to your VP? And I was like, I did. And she was like, you know what? Um, don't be afraid to negotiate, which meant that the 13500 was only the starting point. If I wanted, I could have asked for more and they would have gave it to me because they did not want me to leave. And in that moment, I had to pray. I said, God, let me know what to do. And he said, I'm with you no matter what you decide. And I was like, okay. And I had peace with both decisions. But I walked into my office. I walked into my VP's office on that Monday and I told her, today's my last day. And I cried. I cried so much because I love her. I love my team. I love um, what I do. I love being a producer. Like, it was just so unreal to leave and pass up all of that money um, because what really mattered to me in that moment was to have peace in my finances. And what I realized was that no number was gonna give me peace in my finances. And in order to break the spirit of uh, fear in my family, I needed to move in bold faith. And so um, everyone that I told the story to that day, I was saying my goodbyes that day, and I told all of them that I was leaving because I didn't tell anyone that I was going through this. I just um, went through two weeks by myself, and the last day I told people, you know, I'm leaving, and they were so impressed. They kept saying things to me like, you're so strong. And honestly, I only was strong because I asked for strength that day. And God gave it to me. They were like, I always wanted to do something like that. I have dreams, I have visions, but I never did it because I was comfy. Again, fear talking. Because who's just gonna pass up a job with benefits to do something that you don't even know if it's gonna uh, work. But um, I felt so blessed because they all kept telling me, you know, you're ambitious, you're a good worker, we believe in you, we wanna follow you, we wanna know like how good you're doing. And on top of that, um, my job also told me, also know that we always have an open door if you ever want to come back so that felt good to have that cushion so my last day of work was in January and um, I feel like that I've been blessed ever since I mean there have been some ups and there have been some downs because some days I can see clearly where I need to go and some days I'm like God is it even worth it but God has been such a blessing to me every single day I still continue to worship I continue to create by speaking things into existence um, I'm still so focused on what God has for me to come that I won't allow the enemy to stop me during this moment. And every time I share this story with someone, it gives them more faith. It lets them know, you know what? I've been bound by fear for way too long and I wanna break free too. So when God told me that this year, I'm gonna walk by bold faith, I didn't know what that meant until day six into the year when he says, quit your job. And then about three weeks later, God told me, start to speak the life that you want. And I didn't know how to do that either because that was difficult. But I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna have an update to this video to let you know everything that I spoke during this season of bold faith will come to pass or has come to pass. So I hope you feel blessed by this um, video. I hope you feel blessed by my message. I hope you feel blessed by my story and by my journey. I wanna thank you for following me all this time. I did release two blogs. Um, how to hear from God and how to discern his voice and I felt so confident in releasing those blogs because of this experience that I had so don't forget to subscribe so you can get more blogs and vlogs from me also follow me on Instagram at book of star underscore so you can get daily inspirations